Welcome everyone to our panel of empowering women in sports, a new kind of mutual topic it seems for our uh, educators and business leaders. But is it really? When we're thinking about the old adage, a sound mind um, and a sound body, it makes absolute sense that holistic education is at the forefront and um, including uh, equal opportunity for everyone to be a leader and to learn in a variety of ways. With me today, I have some very interesting guest speakers. Uh, starting with, and I'd like to introduce Annie Costadinidis, who's a former national basketball star, the first woman to be elected on the board of the Hellenic Basketball Federation. She's a director of athletics at the American Community School of Athens, Greece, and vice chair of the International Schools Athletic Association. Welcome, Annie. Next on our panel, we have uh, Tim Ananiadis. Tim is uh, a man greatly admired as managing director of the Hotel Grand Bretagne and the King George. He led both of these hotels with extraordinary vision and humility to uh, become two of the most iconic hotels in Greece and a, you know, a destination of lux luxury destination for many people across the world. Welcome, Tim. Yana Darili, who is a wellness expert, Dr. Yana Darili. She's a TV show host uh, and producer. She's uh, a woman advocate and a wellness coach. Welcome, Yana. And finally, last but not least, uh, Dora Pandeli, who is a sports analyst and sports commentator on EuroLeague, among others with a background in psychology and knows her audience quite well and her uh, players, a former basketball player herself, and a, work, a woman working very hard in a world dominated by men, but certainly making waves. Welcome, Dora. Let me start with Annie. Annie, uh, you are uh, in your capacity as all of these, the above that we just uh, mentioned. First of all, congratulations on your remarkable achievements in the basketball world. As the first woman to be elected on the board of the Hellenic Basketball Federation, what changes or initiatives have you been able to introduce to promote gender equality and enhance opportunities for women basketball? And this is gonna be a convoluted question. In your role as Director of Athletics and as Vice Chair of the International School Athletic Association, how do you encourage and empower young female athletes to pursue their dreams? First of all, thank you for including me in your panel. Uh, and um, I'm very happy to be here with uh, all these individuals. Um, I started with the little things regarding the Hellenic Basketball Federation. I started with the little things because every small thing counts. Uh, the first thing I did was uh, I, I requested that women's basketball has an office space. Um, you know, when we went to, when uh, in the past years, uh, you would walk in the Hellenic Basketball Federation and there were offices left, left, right and center, but there was nothing dedicated to women's basketball. So one of the things that uh, was done immediately uh, was to have our own space, um, decorate the office with, with uh, quotes and logos that pertain to, to women's basketball, uh, put a sign on the door. So as I say, it's these little, little things that matter, just as an as initi initiative to, to start changing the mindset. Um, a male-dominated, uh, world in terms of basketball in Greece, uh, and uh, this was this was a situation for many decades. So, having then done that, although it may have not had a great impact, or maybe some people didn't understand the reasoning behind it, I felt that there needed to be presence for women's basketball. Um, the next thing that that I thought was very important is to to um, recruit other female basketball players that were retired so that um, we can have these ladies involved in what we're trying to do. I also believe that young, young girls should and need to have female role models. And having those women involved in, uh, in women's basketball, I thought it would, it would maybe create a wave. 
that would encourage other girls to, jo to play basketball. And the next thing was to, to try to have a strategy as to what, are, what the next steps are to empower young girls to be involved. Um, that strategy needed some thought. Uh, first and foremost was we needed to find out how many girls were involved to see, to have actually data uh, so that from that data we could have a course of action. Um, the one thing that I must say is that there is a strategy in place. We have recruited former national team players. Um, I also believe that when uh, we have our council meetings, um, I keep reminding people, you know, women's basketball. So I think I'm the voice that in the past uh, it wasn't there. Uh, I do believe that uh, some steps have been made. Uh, some people call it baby steps, but you've got to start somewhere. But one thing for sure is that, um, you know, there was a culture of over 30 years, which was, as I said before, there was male dominance. It's very difficult to, ch to change the culture. But so the mindset, changing the mindset and reminding people that women and young girls deserve the opportunity uh, to, to, play, to play basketball. Now, in regards to my other roles as a director of athletics and as a vice chair of the um, International Schools Athletics Association, um, the one advantage uh, that we have there is that we are all like-minded schools, which means uh, these schools in their mission in some form or another believe in gender equity, believe in equal opportunities for young girls, um, and um, within our school, for example, we have the same number of sports for boys and we have the same number of sports for girls. Uh, when coaches come and tell me that, uh, you know, one particular team doesn't have enough girls for, uh, during tryouts, w what we do is we recruit girls from physical education classes. Um, there, there's no way that we're going to have, that we're not going to have a team because of lack of interest. Uh, I personally believe that sports cultivate the soft skills of an individual. Uh, I do believe that uh, young girls may not know what they like yet until they try it. So through our coaching staff, through our educators, um, we, we, we try to, to inform our young students, uh, even starting from elementary. Uh, the value of sports, be it recreational, uh, be it competitive, um, and through that journey, I think each child finds their path in sports. And I think, you know, it's really important. Everybody wants to know your making story. I'm sure your story has been told again and again. But just to ask you, you've had quite a number of challenges and a number of triumphs in your career. How have you been drawn on these to help young uh, female athletes navigate some of the hurdles and challenges that they face? Well, as a young girl and involved with basketball, the number one um, um, challenge was everybody told me I was short to play basketball. Uh, and I guess uh, I, I... We didn't see you shoot yet, that's why. <laughs> and I guess uh, at the time, you know, it, it's good to be in, in, in someone's life, it's good to be stubborn at times. So that motivated me to, to uh, cultivate other skills uh, in, this, uh, in the sport of basketball. Um, so, what I tell young girls is, it's, it's okay to dream big. You need to dream, dream big. Uh, unfortunately or fortunately, uh, sometimes you got to work harder than anybody else, any males, for example. Uh, but nevertheless, if you've got your goals, and I do believe that, that you need to start with, you know, step, reaching, reaching different... Um, uh, different goals at different times, I think eventually it will get, it will get you there. Uh, I also believe that um, challenges are good because if everything was easy, then you tend to, to kind of relax. And what I believe in, in uh, what I always believed when I was playing, but even afterwards when I was into the business world, uh, I believe there's always somebody out there that is working to be better than you. So uh, uh, honestly, um, I, I, I think that what I always tell young people is um, never be at ease. 
keep working and eventually that will take you higher and higher. Thank you, Annie. So persistence and being stubborn is definitely an asset in this area. Um, Tim, uh, let's go to the business one here. Tim and Adiana is a leader known for your visionary approach in the hospitality industry. How do you believe the principles of empowerment and, and inclusivity can be applied to support and elevate women's participation in representing uh, sports, in representation in sports? Actually, uh, I was thinking about it after our, our beginning of our conversation yesterday. Um, although both corporations, if I talk about the hospitality industry for that matter, which I think applies in a lot of other industries, uh, although sports and sponsoring sports or, or or looking into participating in sports events as a corporation or as an as a entity is there. Um, very seldom, if any time, it's actually focused on, on, a, on a female athlete. And, and if you look at, uh, I was looking around to see what we've done over the years. Uh, we sponsored accomplished athletes, but not the uh, the, the younger or, or people within our corporation or within our entity that could actually uh, succeed. We do, we do have uh, programs that support uh, innovation, uh, support athletic skills, um, but those are not necessarily generic. It's not focused on how we were able to, uh, to, to, uh, to uh, reward athleticism, more importantly, um, to be able to hire people within, from the athletic part, the athletic world, into our world. Um, I mean, yeah, with, uh, you know, with the spas and the wellness, we have some, you know, it started now, but it's very limited, and it's, uh, it's out of a need, not necessarily consciously, to support, you know, a, a female athlete. Gender disparity persists in various industries, including, including sports, of course. How can businesses like hotels and organizations in the hospitality sector contribute, you mentioned a few a minute ago, but to breaking down the barriers and creating more opportunities for women in sports, both locally and on a broader scale? I, I think it should be, uh, I wish the discussion was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, because I think that this is not in the uh, uh, in, in the eyesight of corporate America or corporate in general, and definitely not part of the hospitality. We are uh, a an industry that have a lot of female uh, 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 workers, uh, managers, executives, but then as you reach the more senior levels it becomes less and less, which is uh, interesting because, uh, uh, the, you know, the opportunity needs to be given. I mean, uh, my uh, ex-company Marriott consciously had a program uh, to uh, develop senior executives, female senior executives, they have a separate program. Uh, but in order for that to, to develop, uh, don't forget you have a corporate side, but you have also the local side and the local side, it's full of, you know, adversity when it comes to uh, different cultures, different uh, areas of the world, uh, individuals that own hotels. So it needs to be brought up to the level away from the corporate, because it's great to have a corporate plan, but it needs to go down to the local level. Like we talked about before with sustainability, it needs to go, it needs to grow backwards and not from top bottom, it needs to be bottom up. And that I think takes a lot of education and awareness across all sectors. Ben? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Yana, Dr. Yana. So as a wellness expert and former athlete and coach yourself and an integrative nutritionist, can you enlighten us about some of the health issues that female athletes are facing today? And um, what, you know, how does this hinder uh, their development as, as athletes. Well, I would like to first begin by saying thank you so much for having me. It is an honor to be part of your panel. I'd like to thank 
ACS, and of course, George Sifakis, and the distinguished other panelists that I'm here with, I'm humbled, and the rest of the panelists. Um, I would also like to just, before answering your question, I would like to say that Enrico Sandanidi uh, is a pioneer for all of us women in sports. In the, in the 90s, when I was in Greece, uh, she organized bringing over major coaches from the United States. She brought over Pat Riley one year. And uh, Pat Riley turned around and said to me, I, the only two women in here are yourself, as I was there as a coach as well, and, and Annie. And I, I would like to see more of that in Greece. And I said, well, you know, Annie goes the media is trying to do that. And so she's leaps and bounds she's made for Greece, and I'm very proud of it. And, of course, uh, Dora, who I just met, and I'm just really, you know, a fan of everything she's doing. She's not only a, a beautiful, smart girl, but she's pioneering in the space of sports casting in Greece. Again, back in the 90s when I was there, they didn't have uh, women sportscasters and, and they didn't have us on air. And me, they just sent me into a school to teach uh, sports uh, journalism. But I was the only woman teaching sports journalism in, in one of the classes. So I, I'm just so happy that this is going on and this has come such a long way. And it's great to see all of us here together. I would like to say that, uh, unfortunately, women, the female athletes are still suffering from a lot of issues that need attention. And it's imperative that these panels are had in order to increase the knowledge out there and, and, and inspire people to make change. I'm not going to discuss the professional level because professional female athletes are receiving a lot of uh, support when it comes to health, women's health. But anything under that collegiate and under, I would like to say that there are many health issues. Number one, the deficiency of nutrients is a very big problem for female athletes. They are not receiving enough calories. They are overtaxing their bodies. They are also suffering from chronic uh, stress fractures and, and they're also suffering from a lot of you know, physical conditioning injuries and this also needs to be addressed at work, which all triggers down because it begins from the inability to receive the proper nutrient-dense uh, sports nutrition. And of course, the inability for coaches to understand when it's enough and in overtaxing the muscles of female athletes as well. We also have a lot of mental health issues in, in female uh, athletes that need to be addressed. We have eating disorders and a lot of social let's call it pressure, and a lot of pressure to, to reach the expectations of female athletes. These are very important issues that all lead to health problems in the future. And the reason that a lot of female athletes are dropping out of sports. Participation is dwindling. Programs are not funded enough. This is another very big problem. We need to decrease budgets for female athletes and for women's sports. So there are many issues involved, and we do need to see change. Of course, the United States is excelling in this, but there are so many other countries that are not, especially Greece. I don't see the support of female athletes, and it's disheartening, and I hope that will change one day. We also need to be aware that social pressure for women participating in sports is changing. They, women do not, females do not want to participate in sports anymore. There's cutting of programs, the Board of Education is cutting fiscal education. So these are very, very important issues for the future of female athletes and of course the future of health for females in general. Thank you, Yana, for that. I think you touched on some very, very, touched on some very important uh, unspoken issues. Uh, I think we're hesitant to speak about a lot of these mental health issues and other because of the stigma that's associated with that, but I think it's time that you know, that this you know finally comes there out. Are because it's the only way to tackle it, right? To talk about it first. So given all of that, um, still women have some strong athlete role models who have beaten the odds. But what do you think could be done about all of these things so that those role models and you know women athletes in general can continue beating the odds and and maybe beyond? The solutions are actually very simple to meet all of these future and current health problems for female athletes. The solution is to increase knowledge, 
to offer education to not only the uh, female athletes, but to their parents, to their coaches, to the sports teams. We need to add interdisciplinary teams into the organizations. We need to offer uh, physicians, uh, uh, clinical psychologists, dietitians, sports nutritionists, and orthopedic surgeons. We need to assist the female athletes so they can, we can foster a future for them. And of course, in order to beat all of these uh, health issues. Now, as far as role models, that's a big problem because socially, there aren't many role models. I mean, of course, Serena Williams is one of all our favorites. And of course, a lot of the tennis pros, but we are not seeing enough role models for female athletes. And so they are looking to fashion and fashion is causing another issue. So the restriction of caloric intake also to follow what's going on in fashion, which that's changing a little bit, which I'm happy to see that we're kind of trying to get a little bit off of the very, very thin model. Let's just hope it doesn't escalate into other other type of models, which are also unhealthy for, for any uh, female or male for that matter. matter. But what we would like to see is everyone feeling comfortable with themselves and being able to perform, having the right nutrients and, of course, physical conditioning support. Role models are important. So we would like to see more, more brands bringing in the basketball players, the female basketball players, the female volleyball players, the swimmers. We would like to see more female role models for the sports world, for female athletes. And these are just the few things that we can do. It's really knowledge, education, and inspiring and adding in and more participation for female athletes as far as role models are concerned. I know. Thank you, first of all, for joining us today because I know you've been traveling in the United States, working for the NBA, and uh, really traveling to, to come to this panel. So it's, it's really wonderful to have you. Um, as a former, you know, both sides, player and you're at the other end as well, as a former basketball player and sports commentator, how are you currently supporting women in sports, particularly in the context of basketball with the EuroLeague, and what inspired you to become an advocate of women in sports? First of all, thank you for having me here today. It's a pleasure. And I should uh, say before I start, like uh, Yana Darilis also comment on Annie's career, because I grew up watching Annie playing. I didn't have one tenth of her talent, but you know, as I said, we all have to uh, dream big. So to begin from the second part of your uh, question, I think. The way I grew up, um, it was what motivated me to be an advocate for women's sports. You know, coming from an underprivileged um, environment that was not setting me up for success. I found in basketball a place that I can be successful, that will give me the tools to be successful, that will make me develop skills like discipline, understand the importance of teamwork, be persistent. Uh, setting me up even for failure because we live in an era that we are not allowed to be to fail we, we have to be flawless like on social media everybody's looking for, to be perfect and that's not right we need to learn the kids that it's okay to make a mistake to fail that's the only way uh, you will learn so you know growing up uh, within sports and adapting all these uh, skills that later on now I can um, apply to what I do uh, it forced me, and it's inevitable, not you know, to be an advocate for sports, for, uh, for female athletes, because you understand the power that sports uh, has, have. And uh, for me, seeing all these opportunities that females uh, can have through sports, it makes me want to do even more things. So starting, going back when I was playing basketball, and you know, growing up in an era without social media, it was hard for me to look to, to get a scholarship. But I was lucky enough to be one of the first girls to get a scholarship to play uh, basketball over the United States um, for, an, uh, for a university and get an NCAA scholarship. So that was the first thing, start opening doors for other girls to come after me. Then from a journalist, uh, from my journalism career, start doing things that I wasn't expected to do. What I'm saying by that is like, there are a lot of rooms in this industry that we're not allowed to be. We're not expected to be in those rooms. And I wanted to just, you know, smash those doors and get into those rooms and say, I want to commentate on a game. 
I want to be behind the cameras. I want to do things that um, nobody wanted me to do. But in order to do things that nobody is expecting you to do, you have to make your way through. You have to make yourself visible in a world that doesn't want you to be visible. Because I always said before, it's a male uh, dominant environment and uh, we need to be there. We need to be there and be perfect. Because we know that um, female journalists, now will um, speak from what I've been through, we've been judged a lot. Uh, so we have to be ready. We have to be there. We have to know that we're going to be judged. And me trying to open those doors, trying to become the first commentator from a Greek network, I'm the fourth uh, entire Europe. I'm the first female that worked for EuroLeague, uh, the first one that had her own show, the first one who worked with the NBA Europe, the NBA, the NBA Summer League, all those things, um, they fulfill me because I think I open doors that other girls will not be scared to walk into those rooms and say, if she did it, I can do it. If she grew up playing basketball and having all those skills, maybe if I do sports, nobody has to do it in the highest level. Very few people will do it in the highest level. But learning all those skills, it helps you apply them to the business world. And that, for me, was the biggest gift. And it was inevitable for me not to try and be an advocate with every single thing I do and be a role model and lead by example every single day of my life. Uh, those young girls that look up to all of us and we have to take responsibility because, you know, success, it's always past tense. It's what you have done until today. So you're not successful if you're not giving back. Success is not about titles and how much money you make. It's about where do you give back. And if we don't give back, no matter who we are, we're not successful. And I just uh, want to make a comment here because both uh, you, Nora, and Diana, you know, dressed with Annie and uh, how much you admired her uh, and for your career, Jordan, you know, growing up. I think it's so important for women to support other women. And, uh, you know, we want to see as much of that as we want to see, you know, men supporting women. We want to see it, uh, women supporting one another. Um, so, Dora, in, in your experience, one final question. What are some big challenges that women face in pursuing a career in sports? And what do you think could be done in different organizations? That is a great question. And, you know, uh, yesterday when we spoke about uh, what we're going to say and what the questions will be, I started doing some research because, you know, um, United Nations are always publishing uh, articles and studies based on the sustainable development goals and the progress. Uh, and because we're talking about women empowerment, there is no uh, women empowerment talk if we don't talk about the gender gap. So that gender gap will not become smaller if we don't empower women. Um, and I read this very interesting article, which I have on my notes. <laughs> Yeah, and I wanted to share because it's very interesting. Um, there is one index that you, it will appear to all the studies of UN uh, regarding women, and that's the Women's Empowerment Index, W-E-I. Uh, and that shows uh, the five dimensions that women are, um, are included in, and it has to do with health, education, inclusion, decision-making, and violence against women. And that index rating, it reveals uh, if we're making any progress. So I wasn't very happy with what I read, and that was like a couple days ago. Less than 1% of women and girls live in a country with high women's empowerment. So empowerment, even though it's, uh, you know, we see it in commercials and we try with the U.S. women's um, soccer team or with the WNBA, I'm talking about you know, the most recognizable uh, sports, it's not enough or it's not effective. And um, the other interesting thing is that globally women are empowered to achieve on average only 60% of their full potential. And that says a lot because we tend to think that we empower women, we do all those things, but we don't focus on the big picture. We focus only on what is, you know, we see on commercials, we see on campaigns, but deep down, there are so many girls out there um, that they don't receive effective empowerment. And that's really uh, sad because another study that I read recently said that 
If we look at um, all the executive positions in major companies in the U.S., six out of ten male executives, they played college sports. If we go to women's, nine out of ten executive members played college sports. And if we go to CEOs, 96% of those girls played sports. So I don't say that, you know, sports can solve the problem, but definitely can make a major difference to close that gender gap because it teaches girls to have a voice. And when mm -hmm. girls have a voice, they know how to use it. That's what I was trying to say initially, that, that the skills that you described as you grow up to be a successful athlete, the same skills that you need to become a, 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 uh, a, a, a successful executive, uh, and discipline, which is one of the major things that an athlete you know, has to acquire, it's a huge uh, tool for an executive or a senior executive to be able to, to, to be successful as a leader. So they should. And I would like to say about the underprivileged communities, it's so important to support female athletes because that's what's teaching them to become leaders, to have, uh, to feel secure about themselves, and to get out there and reach higher levels in, in, uh, on a professional level, to have a career. So absolutely, it's, sports is important. Funding needs to go back into uh, the uh, physical conditioning and sports departments of all board of all the educational boards in the world, actually, and support that. That, that percentile that doesn't offer these things in those in countries that are underdeveloped. We need to inspire women and, and, and you know, get them uh, out there so they can have a great future. Just to follow you up, because I have the same yeah. thing. Gender gap you're talking about, I won't disclose the company, doesn't matter, it's a hospitality company. Senior positions, the, the, the mean pay gap, 3.4 for a man, 2.5 for women. Well, those are certainly, Dear, yeah, food for thought today. I want to thank you all for being with us, such incredible leaders. It's been an honor in your, your uh, relevant fields and beyond. And talk about the local action making global impact, because I know all of you have been uh, also, uh, you may be here in Greece right now, but you have worked in the United States and internationally, making a difference around the world in your relevant fields and beyond. So thank you all for being and joining, joining ACS Athens, Ideagen, and Alicone today. And I uh, hope to see more of you in the future in many different ways. Thank you.